All right. I want to explain a couple things about agar transfers and uh, a couple of tips and tricks. So, in one of our videos, you saw us take some agar from here and here with an exacto and our handy dandy tool. Then we went to here. This is just the third day. This is just the third day after the transfer. Look how they're doing. All right, and but what I want to go over is this. If you remember, when we put our clone tissue here, we saw like on the second or third day, we got a big spot of bacteria or something. It looked like bacteria. So what I did was I cut around it a pretty good distance away and flipped that out quickly so I didn't touch any of this when we did that. And it kept growing fine perfectly fine it even grew into the hole as I told you guys it would look at that now this is a piece from the potato um, flakes that was already there this is not contamination I knew that from the get-go so I didn't worry from the back you can see the little piece of tissue that we put there you can see how it's growing into the hole even this is strong, good strong mycelium. But since at the time we did it, the mycelium had, had grown just a little bit and the contamination was very far, I took the chance to cut it out. If the mycelium would have been very close to the contamination, I would not have done that. Let me explain. We had the contamination here. It was a spot like that big in comparison. It was pretty far away, so I cut away here. Now, let's say that this is our tissue. And the contamination was here. It's very risky to cut this out because it already touched the mycelium. So it may have already contaminated f farther down than you can see or that you can tell. So if the mycelium is touching the contamination blotch, I wouldn't have done that. What I would have done is this. I would have, this is our, Mycelium, say contamination already touched it. I would find the farthest part away from the contamination and then cut a piece from there. Probably right there. And then put that in a new agar dish right in the middle so the reason should be obvious because it's already touching the mycelium so it may have already spread invisibly and if you cut this out like here this is no longer here and you're like oh cool I cut it out but then it's, you start getting contamination over here and it starts spreading and killing your mycelium. Or worse, it's there, you don't notice it, and then you inoculate with this in a bag, in your Ziploc bag, and then you get contaminated here, way further down the road, and it's horrible. So again, the lesson is simple. If the contamination is far away from your 
mycelium, you can risk it. It's, it's even better to always do this and just leave the contamination. But in, in a way, I wanted to test it because I've done it before. But I wanted to show you guys that there's another way to do it, even though people say never to do it. It can be done. Um, this is safer because you leave the contamination behind and and don't worry about it anymore. Here, you, you'll end up still worried about it. Well, what if it comes back? Um, also, another thing is don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, if you're going to grow from clone, you do at least two, three more uh, transfers. Um, you take like three or four pieces of your uh, fruiting body and that way if one goes really bad you don't even transfer out you just toss it um and then you still have three or you still have two that type of thing um never put all your eggs in one basket never think that oh i'm going to do just one agar dish and that's going to be fine always do at least two three even more um if you do too many then if you have to transfer out from there, you need to have a lot of dishes. So it, it depends on how many agar dishes you have to spare so you can do your transfers. But at least put your eggs in, in two or three baskets. Um, and that's about it. It's, it. The agar is not complicated. People are afraid of it or nervous about doing agar work. Um, they really don't want to get into agar. I, I see the posts on Reddit all the time and they go, Whoa, yeah, I gotta get into agar, I gotta get into agar. Um, it, it's not difficult. And if you want to start the easy way, buy your Petri dishes from Amazon. Get the link from my list. I'm not even, the list is there for you guys. I don't even make a profit from that. I haven't gone through the trouble, um, but it's the best price I've found. Um, and uh, yeah, to begin, just start by your own plates, by your own Petri dishes. They have to say pre-poured because <laughs> if not, they show you that it has agar in it, but they come to you empty. Because it doesn't say pre-poured. It just says, oh, agar dishes. And a bunch of pretty pictures of scientists using it with agar inside. And when you get it, it doesn't have any agar. I, it hasn't happened to me, but it almost did one time. I was like, oh, wait. This doesn't say pre-poured. And when I looked better, looked closer, it, it wasn't. It was empty dishes. So um, if you're going to buy them empty, buy these. that are reusable. And I also have those in the... Uh, tools and materials list they have to be pp5 pp5 which is a plastic that'll take the heat and you can reuse um so that's it uh those are some pointers about um, doing agar transfers and agar work and that type of thing um one last thing is that you can use um tissue from your mushroom to start um, your mycelium growth or you could use spores like uh, we saw in the other video spores to agar also you could use a spore syringe and put just a drop or two and start from there or a liquid culture syringe and do that as well um, there's many ways you can use that agar and and we'll be posting more and more videos on this because it's important to learn agar <laughs>